I did something. And I don't know how to tell you guys. <laughs> Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is we'll get older, older. So let us dance this side away. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Well Lived. I hope that you guys are doing well and you're looking forward to today's crazy episode because I did something and I don't know how to tell you guys. <laughs> but I guess the only way to do it is just to rip off the Band-Aid. So here we go. You know the cabinet that I refurbished last week that I resanded restained, put new handles on, it turned out beautifully. Well, I did something to it and I am so nervous to tell you what I did because I just don't know how you guys are going to respond to it, but here we go. <laughs> I can't even look at you. <laughs> I cut it in half. Yeah, I cut it in half. Let me explain. So last week, after I launched the video, I had Mark bring in the cabinet to the living room because I wanted to see what it looked like in its new space. Ever since we got it, it had been sitting in the garage and so I needed to see it in its new space so that I can figure out what we're going to do with the rest of the living room. And so as he brought it in and put it into place, we just stood there staring at it in silence. In my head, I was thinking, this thing is massive. There is no way that is going to work into this space. I didn't voice it. I was just thinking this. And I think the reason that the both of us were silent during this time is because I wasn't ready to confirm what I'm sure he was already thinking and he didn't want to say that it was way too big and it wasn't going to work because he knew that that would send me like often to orbit so we just stood there in silence and finally I said the cabinet is a little bigger than I thought that it was going to be in this space I just need some time to figure out how we're going to work it and luckily he had a tea time that was coming up and so he was going to be going golfing all day long which was great because it allowed me time to truly think about what we were going to do with this cabinet. No way did I want to come back onto this video this week and tell you guys that I had to get rid of it after you spent 40 minutes invested in your Sunday morning watching this video, there was no way that I was going to tell you that I got rid of the cabinet. I was going to have to figure out something else. And I was like, I wish that there was just a way that I could take off like 10 to 12 inches off the back of the cabinet just to make it a little bit more shallow. Because if you remember, I think I mentioned last week, the cabinet was 37 inches deep, which is really big. And our living room is not that big at all. In fact, it's quite small. And I said, but if I could cut it down and get it to, you know, maybe like around the 20, 27 inch um, measurement, that would work really great with this space. But I can't cut this cabinet. There's no way I can cut this cabinet. But then the more that I started to look at it, I was like, but could I cut this cabinet? So of course I went to YouTube University and just to see if other people took on a project like this. If other people had cabinets brought in, maybe even kitchen cabinets come in and they realized that they were just too deep and they needed to cut off some, some of the, uh, the back to make it a little bit more shallow to fit into their space. I figured there had to be people that had to do that at some point somebody in the world had to do that and luckily there were lots of people that have had to do this and so I found this one lady and she was really great because she showed step by step what she did and all of the tools that she used and after watching that video I was convinced that I too could cut my cabinet and so uh, when Mark came home later that evening I was like I have to tell you something and he was like, what is it about? And I said, it's about the cabinet. And he was like, 
I think the cabinet is too big and it's not going to work in this space. And I was like, how did that feel? How did that feel getting that off your chest? <laughs> but you're right. It is way too big and it is not going to work in its current space, but we're going to go ahead and cut it. We're going to cut some of the, uh, some inches off of the back. And he was like, what? There's no way. How are we going to cut this cabinet? And so I showed him the video and after the video, he too was convinced that we would be able to cut this cabinet to fit our space. And so we went to the garage and we pulled out all of the drawers, 10 to be exact, pulled them all out. We decided that 12 inches would be a good amount to cut off the back and that would still give us plenty of room to put our record player onto the cabinet um, as well as a lamp and some decor. We still had lots of space. Um, and so we took all of the drawers out and we set the table saw to 12 inches and we begin to just rip the drawers one by one down <laughs> I was a little scared I was just like okay we're doing this like once we make this first cup there's no turning back but we just kept going and kept going and so all of the the drawers were finally cut and so then next we came inside and we brought Mark's circular saw inside and we measured the 12 inches off of the back and I decided to put painter's tape down. I just thought that maybe it would help um, once the blade goes through the wood from it to splinter and for it to make any marks on the back. So we did put down um, some painter's tape and we went ahead and we cut the top. And once the cut, the top was cut, then we cut down the sides. And then once both of the sides were cut, then we tipped over the cabinet and then we cut the bottom and then split <laughs> the cabinet into two. And so we were like, all right, here we go. And so we pushed the cabinet back into place and um, I was nervous. I was really nervous. I'm like, I don't know. Did we cut too much off? Maybe we cut too much off. It's looking really, really shallow now. And so then I was just like, but okay, let me, let me put the drawers in. Maybe that will help. And so I went back out to the garage and then I took off all of the old backs of the drawers. And then um, once all of the old backs were taken off, I put them onto the back of each new drawer and then brought those in. And now I'm going to show you guys what the cabinet looks like in its real space. So this is the cabinet and this is the wall that it's going to go onto in the living room. And as you can see, the cabinet is a little more shallow than what you probably remember from last week's video. But the most important thing is that it now fits into our space. And as you can see, the drawers work just fine. The sides are there, there's a back there, we slide in perfectly, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm sure you guys are wondering what this green tape is behind me and if you remember from last week's video I mentioned that there may be one more project that I wanted to tackle before doing a final reveal of the living room and this is going to be that project. Also, you guys know that Mark and I decided not to do a full entertainment system on this wall simply because the wood was just so ridiculously expensive. We didn't want to spend that type of money on that project at that time. So now we've decided to create a full entertainment system on this wall using ridiculously expensive wood that neither of us want to spend, but we're willing to do so because Jessica needs a place to put all of her stuff. <laughs> In all seriousness, even though that is very true, once we put this cabinet on the wall, we just felt like more could be added to this wall to really maximize the space. And so I thought that maybe some shelving or some bookshelves would look really nice on this wall and would give us a place to put all of our collectibles and pottery and books and candles and all the stuff that I love to collect. And so what I have done is taken out some 
painter's tape and just kind of taped off where we could potentially put some bookshelves and so we decided to go ahead and move forward with bookshelves which is definitely a pared down version of what we originally created when we were going to do the really big massive uh, entertainment system on this wall and I really think that it's going to be nice so one will be on this side of the cabinet the other bookshelf will be on this side of the cabinet and again I think it's just going to be a really nice space to put all of my stuff and so the main purpose of this cabinet is to put our record player on top of it so one of the cubbies of the bookshelves that we're going to create can be used to store all of the albums that we're now starting to collect so once I had all of the tape and kind of knew the measurements, um, just kind of vague measurements of how wide I wanted the bookshelf to be, I transferred that over to a piece of paper and then gave that over to Mark. And he's actually currently in the office right now working on all of those measurements. So he's getting very specific measurements. And then once he kind of knows what everything is going to be, then we're going to transfer that into how many pieces of plywood are we going to need how many pieces of one by threes we're going to need how many pieces of two by fours we're going to need so that we can have a shopping list and we can just go out and get all the stuff that we need from Home Depot so I'm gonna go and check on him to see how that is going and then once he's finished with all of the measurements and we have our shopping list then I will meet you guys at Home Depot So we are back from Home Depot and we got all of our wood and supplies that we need for the bookshelves. But on the way home, I realized that I forgot to show you guys the inspirational picture that I found for how I want to build these bookshelves. So this is the picture here and I found it on Pinterest and when I found it, I immediately loved it because I loved how chunky and substantial it was. It really looked like it was going to be a piece that was going to showcase whatever it was that you put onto those shelves. Now, I could have gone to Ikea and gotten the Billy bookcases and you guys know that I love those because I have them upstairs in my closet to store all of my shoes in. And actually, I think just this past week, Lone Fox did the same thing. He went to Ikea, got the Billy bookcases, trim them out to make them look like bookshelves and they're stunning they're really really gorgeous but I really did love the chunkiness of this inspirational picture and so I knew that we were going to have to build them from scratch so what we plan to do is cut these one by threes um, to 24 inches and we're gonna have to do 10 of these and so then once we have all of these boards we're going to attach them to the wall to the stud and 
just kind of go ahead and build those all the way down on both sides of our cabinet. And then once those are there, then we are going to take the plywood and then put the plywood on top of the frame and on bottom of the frame, basically creating what kind of looks like a sandwich. So we're gonna have like the brace in the back. We're gonna have three braces out front as the support for the shelf. We're gonna put the uh, plywood on top, plywood on the bottom, and then we're going to face everything out and trim everything out to make it just really beautiful and chunky, and I think it's going to be gorgeous. So don't worry, of course I'm gonna show you guys every step of the process, but I did just want to show you guys kind of my inspiration for how we're going to be moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the miter saw, and then I will meet you guys in just a second so we can go ahead and start cutting our wood. So here is the cut list here and based on Mark's measurements it looks like we're going to need 10 pieces of this wood here cut to 24 inches and then 30 pieces of the same wood here cut to 13 and a quarter inches. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some wood and we're going to get cutting.
I have been sanding all of the longer boards, which are actually going to be the sides of each of the bookshelves. I went around all of the edges to get those nice and smooth, and now I'm doing that to the shorter boards, which will be the actual shelving for the bookcase. And so I have about, I don't know, like five or six more to go, and then I'm going to call it a night because Mark and I have dinner reservations tonight, and I actually need to hurry up and get ready for that. So in the morning, we'll go ahead and start to put the frames together that I cut earlier today and start to adhere those over onto the wall. So I hope that you guys have a good evening and I will see you in the morning. So I am currently building the frames for our bookshelves and it's going pretty good so far. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to take the longer pieces, the 24 inch pieces that I cut yesterday and attach this back piece to the wall into the stud. And then the smaller pieces here, which will be our support, will be glued in all the way across and then once they dry then I'm gonna go ahead and nail them in the back so they're very secure so remember we are kind of building a sandwich here so we'll have this back piece here that will be some supported with the stud in the back of the wall then we'll have the supports that are coming out we'll put a piece of plywood on the top a piece of plywood on the bottom and then we'll have that frame piece in the front just to make everything nice and smooth and pretty and even so this is what I will be working on this morning and then once I get everything glued and nailed then I will take them inside and we will begin to insert them onto the wall so let's keep going
spent a good part of the morning just getting everything prepared. I've done a lot of sanding, a lot of gluing, a lot of nailing, and now we are ready to assemble, I think. So I'm gonna show you guys how I plan to put this bookshelf together, and by no means am I a professional. This is not the only way that you can put a bookshelf together. This is just how I thought was the best way to create my vision. So let's give it a try. So this is the frame. And as you saw, I attached a piece of plywood to the bottom. And that was really to make sure that this frame is really strong as we start to attach it to the back of the wall into the studs. And so once that is attached to the back of the wall, then on each side, we will place a piece of eight foot piece of plywood that we will attach to these side pieces here. And so once those are done, then we can put on the top of our bookshelf. So we have this first sandwich here. So we have a piece of plywood, we have a one by three, and then another piece of plywood. And then we have the plywood on the side. And again, to make that sandwich so that we have our two and a half inch thickness, we'll add an extra piece there and then another piece of plywood attached to that extra piece. So we have this sandwich here, we'll have that sandwich there, and this isn't the right size, but then once everything is built, then we will put a face on everything just to kind of finish it out and make it really pretty. So this is the plan for now, it could change, but for now I think this is going to work and I think it's gonna be really beautiful when we're finished. So let's get started. I think I'm gonna call it. It has been a really long day and we put in a ton of work, but currently I need a break and a cocktail and I just need a moment to zone out. So I will meet you guys back here tomorrow where we will finish up the last part of the last bookshelf along with putting on the tops of the shelves and then framing everything out. But right now I need a cocktail. So I will see you guys in the morning.
morning. <laughs> My voice is not ready for morning yet, but hello. Hope you guys are doing well. This morning I had to go to Home Depot to pick up some more wood because last night we, for some reason, I guess it was the cocktail, got a burst of energy and started to work on the bookshelves even more so. So we're in a really good place this morning, but we ran out of wood for some of the facing that we'll be installing this morning. So I decided to call it quits. I got super tired. It's probably almost close to midnight last night uh, working on the, um, the, the shelves, but I knew in the morning that I was gonna have to make a Home Depot run, and I figured since I was out, I'd grab some coffee already made for me so I didn't have to do it when I got back, and then we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So I have one bookshelf that is completely done other than the facing. This bookshelf here, I still need to do the, uh, the little sandwiches that we keep talking about. I need to do those on both sides, so I'll show you that process. We'll frame everything out, then I'll have to bring out the putty, putty everything, caulk everything, allow that to dry, and then we will paint. So a lot of work needs to be done today, but by the end of this session here, these bookshelves will be done fingers crossed. So take a few more sips of this and then we're going to get to work. I sped that up for you guys but all of that work the caulking the sanding the wood puttying took six hours six hours but this tool saved the day it is by anvil 
and I got it at Home Depot. If you are doing a caulking job at your house, you have to get one of these. It just makes it so much easier. And I think it was like $4.99 definitely save the day. So now I'm going to let the caulk just kind of settle for a little bit and dry. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go grab some lunch. And then when I get back, it will be time for painting finally. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying the build and the painting of these bookshelves. I think they're turning out beautifully, but I have to stop here because if I don't, you guys are not going to have a video to watch tomorrow morning. It is currently 6.30 p.m. on Saturday and I have yet to edit this video, which means I'm probably going to be up all night getting it prepared. But Fingers crossed that I will have this thing uploaded and to you guys by 10 o'clock in the morning, even if that means I don't get any sleep. But I hope that you guys have been enjoying watching me kind of put this together on a whim. Like I said, I am not a professional. This is just how I thought that I could put these bookshelves together based on the inspiration picture that I showed you guys earlier in the video. I honestly didn't know how they were gonna turn out, but there's always, there's just something in me that's always on the hunt to figure things out. It is just embedded in my brain and in my heart. And if I can see it, if I can see it in my head, like I always say in my videos, then I know that I can create it somehow. And that's how I've been able to create many, many things on this channel. So I encourage you, if you are, if you have a project that you're thinking of doing, if you have a trip that you want to plan, but you've been hesitant on it, don't allow your fear of failure to hold you back. Let me say that again. Don't allow your fear of failure to hold you back because I promise if you just take that first step and then the next step and then the next step after that, I promise you, you can accomplish anything you want in this world. I promise you. So with that, I am going to let you go. I hope you guys have a great evening. I hope you guys had amazing sleep because I'm not gonna be getting any, but that's okay, it's okay. This video is worth it and I can't wait for you guys to see it. So have a great day. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you next Sunday for the final living room reveal. Bye.
that customer right now. I am going into Sherwin-Williams. They close in like five minutes and I need paint. The paint that we had in the garage is not the right paint. So in order for me to finish up the bookshelves, I gotta get paint. Wish me luck. Yay! Now I'm going home to paint. 